Good evening and welcome to a very special episode of Left, Right and Centre. I'm Vishnu Shom. It is election season, all right. After months of talk of opposition unity, talks that in the past seem to get nowhere, the opposition alliance has now taken one giant step forward in at least getting themselves a name, INDIA, India, which stands for the Indian National Developmental Inclusive Alliance. That is what the United Opposition Front will be known as, and they have 26 parties for now with them. The NDA, for its part, has the support at the moment of 38 parties. They've reacted to the creation of the India Alliance by saying that the NDA will cross the 50% mark in 2024. Prime Minister Modi said that yesterday. The Prime Minister has also called the Opposition Alliance an alliance of compulsion and one built around negativity. He's also asserted that NDA also stood for N, or New India, D, Developed Nation, and A, aspiration of people and our region. So what we thought we would do on this show is a deep dive into where each alliance stands at the moment. So let's quickly bring up the graphics one by one to give you an idea of what it is that we are talking about. So let's just bring up our first graphic and this actually gives you the situation which uh, as it was uh, presently in, in 2019, the NDA won 331 seats, the India Alliance, then of course called the UPA, 144. The vote share lower by not that much for the India Alliance, but the BJP at 39.8%, the India Alliance at 35.3%. Here's a map projection of the states which are presently governed by uh, the NDA or its allies, all of those in orange. And let's now to give you an idea of those states governed by opposition parties uh, in the country, all of these states at the moment. And now let's just bring all of this together to give you an all India picture of who controls what. There are a couple of states which are left there in white. These are states not governed by either the India Alliance or its members or the NDA, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, uh, Orissa, Jammu and Kashmir. A quick summary, 2019, the BJP won 303 seats. Let's continue with that. The BJP won 224 seats with over 50% of votes. That is significant if the India Alliance is to get ahead. They won 151 seats with over a 20% margin. Again, these are what the India Alliance would need to get ahead. Of 300, those 303 direct contests with the Congress took place in 176 seats. We'll bring you more details of that. So the question is this, can the opposition defeat the BJP on these critical 303 seats? Now let's um, give you more specifics um, in terms of strike rates. The head-to-head -head contest between the BJP and the Congress in terms of strike rate has had the BJP with a 92.1% strike rate, overwhelmingly ahead of the Congress. So realistically, the India Alliance has its work cut out. And in terms of numbers in the Lok Sabha election 2019, head-to-head -head contest between the Congress and the BJP took place in 190 seats, the BJP winning 175, the Congress just 15. The head-to-head -head strike rate in, um, between the BJP and non-Congress parties, this is interesting because the BJP is actually lower when it's had head-to-head -head contests versus non-Congress parties at the BJP at 69.2%, non-Congress parties at 30.8%. Uh, in terms of actual seats, let's bring up the next graphic which gives you that detail. So if you look at the BJP, uh, what you can actually see, uh, BJP versus non-Congress parties, in the Lok Sabha election of 2019, there were 185 seats where they contested against each other, the BJP winning 128, others winning 57. Let's now take a look at the next set uh, of graphics, uh, which actually will give you uh, another perspective. Congress versus non-BJP parties, they contested in 71 of 543 seats, the, with the Congress winning 37, the others 34. So in terms of the strike rate uh, between the two, it is narrowly in favor of the Congress party over some of these other parties, 52.1 versus 48 percent for non-BJP parties. So as we come to the end of this graphics presentation, what we'd like to do now is start analyzing what we've just described to you. And here's a quick analysis. In 2019, 
the Congress party's strike rate against the BJP was extremely poor. Non-Congress parties, in fact, had a better strike rate against the BJP in 2019. Just a matter of fact, which we showed to you, the Congress fought non-BJP parties in as many as 71 seats. And therefore, what is it that the India analysis would have to deal with? They need to improve their strike rate against the BJP on 190 seats. Non-Congress players must level up against the BJP. They need to up their game. There must be strong opposition candidates in non-BJP seats, seats which the BJP has not typically had a very strong presence in. Therefore, can this all happen? The reason why we are bringing you all of these details is because of these big questions. Can the India Alliance set a winning narrative? If they are to, look at the numbers before we try and get ahead of ourselves. Uh, they've got, some would suggest, a very strong ideological uh, set of issues they've raised. Is that enough? What are some of the other key points in terms of big questions? Is the anti-Modi plank enough to win? A third big question is this. Can a negative campaign help India win? The Prime Minister has said, look, this is a negative campaign. We've seen a negative campaign in the past where Chokidar Chodhe clearly didn't help the Congress party. And a couple of other big questions. Can opposition coalition members iron out their differences? There are so many. There's the leadership issue. There's a seat sharing issue as well. Who's going to address those? When are those going to be addressed? And will a one-on-one -on -one contest help or hurt the opposition? We hope to get an answer to that. I'm going to introduce uh, our panelists in just a moment. But 39 versus 26, that's the support which the NDA has and the India Alliance has. Will vote consolidation, in fact, work both ways. Joining us uh, on this program, we've got a great panel. And as you will shortly see, there are no political leaders. There'll be plenty of time for election speeches from all of them. But we've got wonderful analysts, Manisha Priyam, Amitabh Tiwari, Sanjay Singh, Harshvardhan Tripathi, Nidja Chaudhary, who a little bird tells me has come out with a fantastic book. Uh, Aditi Fadnis joins us, as does Sandeep Shastri. Glaring in, uh, in their absence from this program, uh, absolutely, totally glaring are political leaders. We felt that we wouldn't keep them because they do their bhashan on a daily basis. We thought we'd do some analysis. Manisha Priyam, let me come to you first. The task before the India Alliance is absolutely onerous. Um, the NDA has succeeded in the past, largely banking on the face of the Prime Minister. Do you feel, right up off the top, that could be the big issue which, uh, which decides the eventual outcome? No, I think the Prime Minister will still remain the prime force uh, of the BJP and within the NDA. Uh, what has happened is that the image uh, of the Prime Minister that was being dented by saying that the state's interests, the smaller parties, the regional issues, and of course the Mandalite parties are not being accommodated enough. And I think that's a question he's answered very well. He's fairly and squarely got a number of parties. I mean, who can explain the fact that an Om Prakash Rajbhar, who was such a pillar of support to Akhilesh Yadav in the assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh, on which the dust has just about settled, who can tell us that uh, uh, Jitan Ram Maji, who had been propelled into the chief minister's post as a Dalit face and as a chief minister by uh, Nitish Kumar himself. Now, these two at the forecourt of the NDA alliance meeting Jitan Ram Maji, in fact, greeting the prime minister uh, and taking him, ushering him into that meeting. So, in a sense, the image, the optics uh, will remain one where it will be an alliance versus an alliance, but heavily weighed in by the Prime Minister anchoring one side. On the other side, remember always, the most important thing will be that in one-on-one -on -one battles between the Congress and the BJP, the Congress has to do better than Much it did better, in the 2019 yes. elections. And Mr. Akhilesh Yadav in Uttar Pradesh has to give seats to the alliance. Otherwise, you will be faced with a formidable challenge where between Uttar Pradesh and Gujarat, the NDA, let alone the NDA, the BJP will start with 90 plus seats. Then what will you do there? Okay. I mean, it doesn't require too much mathematics to understand. All right. Okay. Ma let me come across to Amitabh Tiwari. Um, Amitabh, uh, you know, the, the politics of or the, the face uh, of uh, the India line, something that which is a glaring omission right now. 
and, and in as much as they say, and Mr. Malikarjun Kharge said, oh, we are going to form a panel, we are going to decide this, and in a finite period of time, it's going to be sorted out. Do you not believe that given the intrinsic differences within the India alliance, this is going to be easier said than done? Yeah, the question of leadership is going to be very tricky for the India alliance. And in 2019, as per India Today Access Survey, 37% people voted on the basis of the prime ministerial face. The, the prime minister got BJP or NDA eight and a half crore votes due to his popularity. And these are basically the non-aligned, non-ideologically aligned voters who flock to the BJP because of his image and popularity. So if you don't have a prime ministerial candidate, what happens is that then you exclude this 37% number from your target or addressable market. Now the question is whether, so now there, uh, there are two strategies. One is uh, e either you go with a face against the prime minister, which could be Rahul or Mr. Khadge or somebody else and try to build an aura around him in the next 10 months, him or her, or you go for a localized kind of election, a seat by seat election. See what has happened is that for the Congress in the states without going uh, with a leader, has worked in Rajasthan, MP, Chhattisgarh, Himachal and Karnataka also. So they, there is a feeling within one section that we should not go with a face but with a combined leadership of Nitish, Mamata, Rahul, etc., Lalu, etc. And then try to make this election a seat by seat localized election. But the question is whether a national election can be fought on a very, very local issues. And that is perhaps going to be the uh, tricky thing here. Okay. You mentioned blocks, uh, 190 and 185 seats blocks. So in the 190 seat block, the third party got only 4% vote share, whereas the lead of the BJP is around 15%. So the third party has no role practically in the 190 seats. So Congress does not get any reciprocity of this alliance from the alliance partners in this 190 seats. Sure. But in the 185 seats, the lead of BJP was 7%. And the third party got 7% vote share on an average in these 185 seats. Congress finished third on 88 seats in this 185 block. So here is where the Congress could help the regional parties in transferring votes to the India Alliance parties and there could be a battle out here. Um, Harshvardhan Tripathi, Sonia Gandhi uh, is sort of notionally the head of the, the India Alliance. She's at least uh, there as a coalition builder. Um, does that add enough heft in the interim? Vishnu, I don't think that Sonia Gandhi is an emotional support that we call a winning combination in the winning combination. Rahul Gandhi is not a coalition builder. No, because of the Sonia Gandhi, the partners of the coalition are partners, their trust is made. If Sonia Gandhi is a face, तो वो ज्यादा कंफर्टेबल होते हैं उनके साथ जिसको हम कहते हैं कि बारगेन टेबल पे बैठेंगे तो थोड़ा अच्छे से बात करेंगे वो राहुल गांधी के साथ अभी भी अनकंफर्टेबल है तो इस जगह पर जाकर सोनिया गांधी इंपॉर्टेंट हो जाती है लेकिन जब हम कहते हैं कि जो कॉन्स्टिट्युएंसी का विनिंग कॉम्बो है वो कैसे बनेगा कैसे हम सीट जीतने की तरफ बढ़ेंगे कैसे कांग्रेस पार्टी हंड्रेड का जो आंकड़ा है उस तरफ क्या बढ़ पाएगी क्या वहां मुझे सोनिया गांधी का चेहरा कोई बहुत काम करता हुआ नहीं दिखता है जिसको कहते हैं कोई एडिशन नहीं हो रहा है दूसरी जो सबसे ज्यादा महत्वपूर्ण बात है जो मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट है नरेंद्र मोदी के लिहाज से 2014 और 2019 उत्तर प्रदेश जैसे राज्य में सभी कॉन्स्टिट्युएंसी में 10 प्रतिशत प्लस यानी किसी भी कॉन्स्टिट्युएंसी में जो भारतीय जनता पार्टी को वोट मिलते थे उसमें 10 प्रतिशत वोट नरेंद्र मोदी जोड़ते हैं दो में वो वोट इंटैक्ट रहते हैं और अभी जब 2022 में हम योगी के साथ उसको जोड़कर देखते हैं तो लगभग सभी सीटों पर एक ऐसा विनिंग कॉम्बो बनता है जो दूसरे किसी भी पार्टनर के साथ वो बहुत डेंट नहीं होता है जो ईस्टर्न यूपी है यानी जिसको हम कहते हैं कि प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी की कॉन्स्टिट्युएंसी से गोरखपुर यानी योगी आदित्यनाथ का घर उसके बीच की छह लोकसभा सीटें ऐसी है जहां पर ओम प्रकाश राजभर इनके आने से इक्वेशन बदलेगा यानी 2014 में जो सीटें जीती थी भारतीय जनता पार्टी जो 71 वन प्लस टू थी 
वो भी ओम प्रकाश राजभर की वजह से थी क्योंकि तब मुख्तार अंसारी की कौमी एकता दल और इनकी पार्टी ये एक साथ लड़ी थी okay. उसकी वजह से वो जीती थी 2019 में ये जब दूसरे गठजोड़ में चले गए तो भारतीय जनता पार्टी को नुकसान हुआ भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने उस नुकसान को ठीक कर लिया यानी उनका जो डिसएडवांटेज था उसको एडवांटेज में बदल दिया अब सवाल यह है कि जो इंडिया क्वालिशन बन रहा है क्या वो सीट्स के लिहाज से कोई इक्वेशन बनाने में कामयाब है क्या उनके साथ जो पार्टनर आ रहे हैं वो एक दूसरे को जमीन पर यानी जो कॉन्स्टिट्यूंसी में लड़ने जाएंगे वहां कोई भी वोट एडअप कर रहे हैं या नहीं कर रहे हैं ये okay, सबसे बड़ा भी पुट दैट क्वेश्चन टू नीड जा इफ यू लुक एट दी अलायसेज प्रेजेंटली इनफैक्ट इफ यू लुक एट दी अलायंस लास्ट टाइम अराउंड अदर देन द बीजेपी मेनी ऑफ द पार्टीज हार्डली वन अ सीट इनफैक्ट द यूपीए एट दैट स्टेज विद द तृणमूल एंड द डी एम के एंड कपल ऑफ अदर पार्टीज डिड विन मोर देन वन सीट दे वन क्वाइट अ फ्यू इन फैक्ट Uh, but in terms of building the alliance this time around do you believe that regional alliances which the india alliance would would so require are progressively getting in place to challenge what the nda has put in place so far look you know what the nda has done what the bjp leadership did in the last hours to get 38 parties together it shows one very clear thing that whatever you and i may think about the opposition unity the bjp leaders takes the efforts at opposition unity very seriously and they don't want to take any chances they don't want to take any risk uh, you know it's very clear uh, that unless there is a, a vote if, unless there is anger in the country against the modi regime which is not discernible to us um, Mo- modi remains a very popular leader he you know a, a percentage here or there may move but essentially he remains at the end of 10 years popular so and the worst case scenario if the opposition does unite at the lok sabha constituency level they can bring down the tally of the bjp hypothetically speaking by 70 80 seats which is what they hope in which case that's a risk that the bjp will not want to take it it is that therefore gone in for the extension of the nda getting as you was you know this choti choti parties rajbars people who will affect one constituency two three four five so they are getting everybody together now for the congress you know you put, you have put a very interesting your your uh, figures are very very interesting obviously the message is clear that the congress needs to get its act together in 190 seats now the congress has done well uh, mr kharge has uh, united the party in uh, in karnataka in chatisgarh in rajasthan Uh, ma- making efforts to unite it in maharashtra so that is a very big thing happening uh, also the you know the ground level sentiment may have moved anti incumbency may have taken its toll bharat jodo yatra did have some impact in so far as it projected rahul gandhi as a serious leader not a pappu but the minus point for the congress the big big minus point is the the organization being in shambles in several states and election they are not only one on sentiment they are one on the uh, organizational muscle okay so okay. i think that is one thing in the 71 seats where the congress and the regional parties fought against each other which you talk about in 2019 that is where the uh, the seat adjustments can take place that is where a difference can be made and the the far sightedness that these opposition leaders show much will depend on that but they also know if modi comes back for a third term it may be an existentialist crisis for some of these parties so that's absolutely, very absolutely true absolutely <laughs> true um uh, aditi fadnis you know no matter how far we try and stretch uh, this conversation and we look at many other points it will ultimately come down to the issue of leadership it just strikes me that perhaps the india alliance would be looking to name their prime ministerial candidate at a much later phase perhaps assuming they they i mean in 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 the event that they actually win the election they would perhaps go for that discussion post that is that not too late uh, in in a country like ours which has been driven by you know cult personalities certainly that of the prime minister um and I, the reason i ask that is how i how are you going to solve uh rahul gandhi kejriwal mamta banerji nitish kumar they all have or appear to have prime ministerial ambitions well uh, the issue is i think also that uh, we have to go back to 2004 uh, 
uh, I concede that uh, nothing remains the same, everything changes. But in 2004, there was no uh, prime ministerial candidate. Uh, there was as much confusion as, as there is today on uh, leadership, on other issues, on even on a CMP. But you did have a situation where uh, the opposition got together and, uh, you know, uh, the, the reason why Sonia Gandhi is so palatable to the entire opposition is because she gave up something yeah. that was within her grasp. So, uh, I'm not sure if uh, uh, for the opposition, uh, this is such an important issue uh, that we have to target uh, Narendra Modi by putting up our version of the person who will... Uh, who will challenge Narendra Modi. Uh, I think uh, in the uh, assembly elections in Himachal as well as in Karnataka, a conscious decision was taken to bypass Narendra Modi. Uh, Sukhu said very clearly that our uh, choice, uh, our and our uh, target is not Narendra Modi. Right. He is the prime minister and we respect him, etc. Now, uh, you cannot replicate that in the Lok Sabha election, but you can... Uh, uh, kind of bypass him uh, by uh, criticizing the issues uh, that uh, Narendra Modi has uh, has has uh, kind of held. Yeah. Uh, today, for instance, uh, even as we speak, he is having a meeting on the death of the of the cheetahs in uh, Gujarat, uh, uh, in the in the in the sanctuary. In but Madhya, yeah. uh, so far, at least what we know is. That he has never, he has not so far publicly held a meeting about the deaths in Manipur, and this is being viewed uh, by many uh, across the country as really bizarre. Yeah, so you know, I mean, so, it's interesting. So basically, what you're saying, Aditi, is that it is, you know, the handling of key issues, which would uh, be make or break for the NDA. Certainly, the handling of the Manipur crisis, you point out. In fact, that is my next question, and I wanted to take that to Sandeep Shastri. Um, the the NDA's agenda uh, so far, based on what the Prime Minister said uh, yesterday, was this dominant national narrative, going to the point of saying that if you look at international nations and, inter and countries, they come to us with the assumption that the NDA is going to win the elections. We are going to win more than 50% of the national vote. We have done A, B, C, D, E. This is what we have to show for ourselves. We've done so well on digitization and so many other schemes. Whereas if you look at the India Alliance, other than this, um, uh, this sort of view against what Narendra Modi stands for, there is nothing specific. Um, is, is that not a problem? Uh, thank you, Vishnu, for coming to me. Uh, yes, BJP and the NDA have no choice but to focus on uh, what has happened in the last nine years because you are defending your record in governance. So you need to, at the end of your second term, talk about what you have achieved. But I think uh, maybe we are being a little unfair in saying that a negative campaign is limited to one side. Mm -hmm. If you see a bulk of the speeches which come on both the sides, it's about attacking the other side and both are reveling in doing that. But I think there is a more important question here, Vishnu, which we need to raise, which is for the alliance of the opposition parties, I see three clear challenges they face. Number one, even though it's a Lok Sabha election, past records show in each of the 28 states, there are different issues which decide the result. So how does the alliance work out its challenges in Kerala, West Bengal, Jharkhand, Uttar Pradesh, Punjab? Now, this is something that would be seen very closely. Point number two, Mamta Banerjee yesterday, day for yesterday, spoke about uh, having a common campaign. Will your campaign come together on issues or will that campaign come together only in attacking the BJP? Because a negative glue cannot hold together an alliance. A negative glue of only attacking the BJP cannot hold together an alliance. And Vishnu, my third and last point, which we have been talking about from the beginning. The biggest danger for the India alliance, if they fall into the trap, is making it a leadership contest. Because the moment they make it a leadership contest, they have lost the contest even before it has begun. I think the BJP is consistent.
continuously trying to say, we have Mr. Modi, whom do you have? Now, the India group, if they need to really take this debate forward, need to make the debate on policy, priority, strategy alternatives, sure. and not so much on leadership. Because the moment you bring in leadership, I would believe... Then you fall you into the NDA's hands. Yeah, you can't compete on that front, at least not at the moment. Sanjay Singh um, joins us as well. Uh, Sanjay, uh, it's interesting when the name India Alliance came out, it sounded quite catchy. But the, the Prime Minister and in, uh, even the Assam Chief Minister were quick to sort of get into the, uh, the immediate argument that, you know, you are contesting for India, we are contesting for Bharat, we are rooted to this, to this ground, to, to, to our land, whereas you have some airy-fairy notions. Um, w was this just a, a jab at the opposition or do you believe that this particular argument could actually be sustained? I don't think this was a very good idea on part of Congress and 26 parties gathered there to name their alliance as India. To begin with, uh, too many parties are trying to claim credit for India. Congress uh, uh, saying this was Rahul Gandhi's idea. Mamta Banerjee, uh, of course, TMC claiming trade because he was the one who actually moved this particular idea. And Nitish Kumar and, uh, uh, of course, uh, Nitish Kumar not very happy with it. He had reservations. He did not appear in press conference. So was uh, uh, Akhilesh Yadav and other left, some left leaders, of course, were there in PC but did not speak. Uh, the point is, when you say India, uh, it connotes a whole lot of things. The question that you are saying, uh, I think uh, uh, decades ago, Rahul Gandhi used to say there were two India, one India for select few, and not only Rahul Gandhi, there were a whole lot of other uh, scholars, particularly left-wing economists and so on and so forth. People said there are two Indias. One India uh, was for select few, that India was shining. Other India was Bharat, the uh, you were referring to, is deprived and uh, backward-looking. But in terms of vote, it is the latter part, Bharat, which Sankarwar even otherwise prefers to call India as Bharat. India, that is Bharat, constitution says. Bharat, the term, even Rahul Gandhi uh, used Bharat Joro Yatra for his Paidal Yatra uh, the foot march through the country. So from there, Bharat Joro Yatra, going back to India, of course, this gives rise to the argument that, okay, you be satisfied with India, that was signing for select you, you have come back to the same position, we are happy with Bharat, that is larger in numbers, and also happy to work for Bharat, with Bharat, and for people of Bharat, because then they say, Hame hai, or we have to say people of this country from Modi's dictatorship, we have to say constitution, we have to say uh, the country and a whole lot of other things. The point that you were asking uh, to uh, fellow panelists earlier, uh, uh, so uh, if you don't give uh, an alternate agenda to carry the nation forward, it's fine that India inclusive, developmental, but what is that developmental agenda? India at least says new India, uh, to aspirational India, and therefore there are certain things uh, that goes well with people of this country, particularly yeah. younger generation. Here there is nothing to say in terms of alternate agenda for governance. Uh, Lalu Yadav, of course, does not present uh, an agenda which uh, can be called governance agenda. So, is, uh, so could be Akhilesh Yadav, so could be kind sure. of left parties, so could be Mamta Banerjee. So therefore there are certain you know, inherent contradictions. and the theme that they are, they are choosing, they are too philosophical, whereas Modi is too concrete, his delivery is proven. And therefore, when you say India, uh, I think uh, the proposition is not very healthy. Since yesterday, this debate is going on, uh, the name, the Daman Klesha. And okay. it is also being said, what if many newspapers, particularly Western papers, and uh, media outlets may fancy Modi wins, India loses. Will that kind of headline be all right? All right. Well, <laughs> that's getting a little ahead of ourselves, but it is an interesting uh, suggestion or an interesting point. Uh, Manisha Priyam, we've seen the Congress be a, little, a, a lot more flexible in the last couple of days, taking a stand on the center's ordinance on the control of administrative uh, services in Delhi recently. Was this not an important step, at least uh, with the goal of trying to get opposition unity working, because without steps like this, it seemed all over the place. 
Uh, certainly, the Congress has been, uh, uh, you know, it's taken the first steps. Remember, even at uh, the peak of the Karnataka elections, you had uh, Mr. Kharge and Mr. Rahul Gandhi trying to meet uh, Nitish Kumar, and they announced uh, that they would be doing the caste uh, census. Uh, they made that decision with Mr. Nitish Kumar. They went back to Karnataka and made that announcement. So those things are there. Also, the fact that on the ordinance. Uh, they seem to have conceded and the Amadmi party came and attended the Bangalore meeting. But will the Bonhomi proceed beyond this between the Amadmi party and the Congress party? Even if the Congress, for example, let's say for the sake of argument, were to concede enough seats in Delhi and Punjab, is the Amadmi party going to stop there? Mm. For them, it's also the moment of expansionism. What are they going to ask for in Gujarat, where you know they've been a non-performer, but the Congress has been wiped out. What would be the arrangements in Gujarat? One does not understand. What if the Amadmi party being an aspirational party starts asking for seats in Haryana, where the Congress thinks that it does have chances and it does have legitimate grounds to believe that, uh, you know, it can revive itself or the Amadmi party is kind of given themselves uh, so much momentum uh -huh. in that state. So one Maybe at this that. in a point of time does not know whether Arvind Kejriwal is going to ask for green field projects as well. Not just places where his party has established himself, but where he thinks he is aspirational. Suppose the discussions go there and you find that one day, you know, Mr. Kejriwal comes out and he says, oh, talks are off and right. I'm walking alone, you know. So we don't know as of now as to what is going to be the outcome. For the Aam Admi Party, everything is at stake. Remember, their very important minister, their deputy chief minister, both uh, in jail, not having been able to secure even bails right now. And uh, we are uh, now seeing and Mr. Arvind Kejriwal uh, going it alone. What would be the kind of confabulations? One does not know. Uh, I think Bengal is the easier situation for the Congress party. But I don't know what the left is going to do in Bengal because the left always, even in the last assembly elections, yep. they were not willing to concede. And they said the rise of the BJP in West Bengal is all Mamta's doing. So the left is not willing to excuse Mamta Banerjee for the sure. original sin of after uh, Jyoti Babu, after Jyoti Da, uh, the, the fact that the left has not been able to firmly regain that state. Mamta Banerjee is stomping them out of their... Uh, okay, Manisha, and I just wanted to quickly uh, bring in Amitabh at this stage. Amitabh, in terms of seat sharing, is that not going to ultimately be a huge problem within the opposition, within the India alliance? See, I don't see seat sharing is going to be a big issue because as you showed, 144 seats, so roughly 150 seats, one or the other partner of India has won last time. On roughly 275 to 300 seats, one of the partners was second. So if you apply the formula of whichever party was number one or number two will get a chance to contest the election, then we already have candidates or we already have a seat adjustment for almost 425 seats. The trickier seats are going to be in Kerala, Punjab and West Bengal. Now I think in Punjab, there will be a friendly fight between AAP and Congress because see, alliances do not take place between number one and number two party in a state. If that does, then both of them or one of them is bound to lose, lose ground. Even in Kerala, can communists and the left uh, and the Congress come together because the, the day they do that, it will give an opening to the BJP in the state. And similarly is going to be the case in uh, West Bengal, even if Congress allies with TMC, I doubt whether the CPM or CPI would go with the TMC there. So there will be some friendly fights within this alliance, Punjab, Kerala and West Bengal. But the good part is that whoever wins these seats is of an anti-BJP nature. So they are right. going to not support the BJP, but back the India alliance. And then there are some states like Telangana, Andhra or Odisha. Uh, 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 where uh, neither the Congress nor the BJP has sure. uh, significant strength. Sanjay Singh, um, attacking the BJP as the India Alliance is doing versus raising specific issues. At the moment, all they are doing is they're talking about the misuse of the agencies. They're talking about the protection of India's democratic values. They're talking about the Prime Minister not having addressed Manipur. Uh, they're talking about human rights. These are all, of course, very important issues. No one is disputing that for a moment. But in attacking the BJP on these issues, 
versus getting into specific themes such as this is what our program is going to be with regard to employment, this is what we need to do for job generation, etc., etc. Um, you know, I mean, are they missing the plot in terms of specifics? Yes, to the uh, graphics that you shared, uh, showed when the program started actually is very revealing. That of uh, 2019, the situation was same. Turn this thing to 2018. This was same Karnataka, same Bangalore, when BJP, uh, when JDS and Congress had come together to form a government there, and a whole lot of Congress uh, opposition leader had gathered there. The number was no less, perhaps, uh, than this was, uh, than what was yesterday. There was a small difference. Of course, that was a conflict. That was a show of unity uh, at swearing ceremony. And uh, then again, the issue was same. The opposition did not have any constructive agenda than making philosophical ground. Of course, then Chokida uh, Chor and so on and so forth. Rahul Gandhi was talking about that. This time, the whatever they are saying can be summed up in four lines. Modi, Desh ko bachana hai, to save the country, save the constitution, and uh, save the people of this country from tyranny of Mr. Modi. This is too philosophical for someone on uh, the, the ground, some uh, the people of Bharat that which we talked about. This is too philosophical. There is nothing concrete. What matters is what kind of delivery that you are going to make to the people. Remember when Modi came in 2014, he challenged UPA 1 and UPA 2 with his agenda of his form of governance, model of governance, which he provided in Gujarat. And also, it was also not just Hindutva, people talked a lot about Hindutva, but that was also kind of economic and social kind of nationalism when they said, Achhe Din Aayenge. That was Achhe Din vis-a-vis -vis what he projected Gujarat as well, Achhe Din kind of projection of days in uh, what happens in Gujarat. So same Gujarat will be translated to India. Well, sure. Here you cannot say Patna model, Naluji no, model. I think, I think it is interesting what you say and uh, you know we did see what the fallout of Chokidar Chor hai last time around. Again a negative agenda. Is it only so much that it can actually achieve or are we genuinely no negative in agenda a works like Yeah or are we genuinely negative in a situation actually works in this when you country have when you the issues which they are talking about uh, the opposition are so important um, that you know it involves people in our country voting for a redefinition of India as it stands today. We leave it over there.